I do think gold goes back up over 2000 next year. There's a forward looking statement for you. I can't tell you when or how much, but just the trend, the inflation that I see, I, 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 I'm comfortable saying, I think gold goes back up over 2000 over the next year. And I, and I think we will see silver, see silver over 30. I mean, you don't need my perspective. Just look at the market's perspective. Clearly uh, markets went risk on. So the question really is sort of why now the fed did communicate, you know, for better or for worse, it did a good job communicating this in advance. I mean, I think this was entirely as expected. Uh, if anything, I was wrong, I would say in that I didn't think the fed would come out as hawkish as the markets were expecting the double taper. No question. And, you know, that was assumed. But on top of that, the three plus rate hikes in 2022, I thought was more aggressive than the Fed would come out. Now, talk is cheap. You know, the Fed hasn't done any rate hikes. You know, the, the rates are still flat. The, the double taper doesn't tighten anything. It reduces the quantitative easy. But we're still easy. You know, before this tapering is done for next couple, next quarter, the Fed is still injecting liquidity into the system. So my interpretation is that since it, the, the expectations were so hawkish, like I really thought there was a chance that the markets could actually respond positively if the Fed came out sounding dovish. Not, and that doesn't mean dovish dovish, but just not as hawkish as expected. Um, so it came out as expected. So it's not quite what I expect, I thought. But it does seem like there was some fear out there that the Fed might respond even more aggressively on the inflation front. So, but let me, so two, two thoughts to put in here. One is like there's a, there was an instant response. And then there was after like a minute, you know, if he's trading seconds, there was a different response. And I think you have the headline. And then you have the dot plot, which, by the way, is not in the same press release as the FOMC statement. You have to you know, dig a little deeper to get the dot plot. And what the dot plot shows and, you know, this consensus of, oh, we're going to raise rates in 2022. It's all 18 dots are looking at rate hikes in 2022. That's that's a big pivot. Um, but then you look farther ahead and instead of, you know, that being takeoff and we're going up and up to, you know, what are we at with inflation? Six percent. Um, instead of that, it curves well over right away. In 2024, they're looking at maybe two, two and a half percent. That's well below current inflation rates. So, and and so that that I think was the not as hawkish as expected. People expected takeoff, and then so maybe and I, I I can't interview every trader in the world and know this, but my my thinking is that they thought takeoff meant something more linear, and instead they got something you know that flattened out. So that was the and then that was the initial response, and that that wasn't good enough for gold and silver. That was fine for for risk assets but not gold and silver. And then Powell started talking. And I think what did it there was that, you know, he was asked obviously about the, the rate hikes and so on and about inflation. And he admitted in a more open way than I thought that they got it wrong. You know, this was not the inflation they were looking for. It's not the inflation they want. You know, it's not based on this super robust growth. It's based on, you know, they say it's all nothing to do with monetary policy. Right? It had nothing to do with the money printing. Oh, it's all these supply chain disruptions. But whatever the reason for it, they're saying it's sticking around. So, you know, that was an eye opener. And and then when they asked about the rate hikes and he said, well, you know, those rate hikes assume a certain amount of growth. They're not written in stone. If we don't get that growth, we're not getting the rate hikes. So you've got Powell saying on the one hand, we've got higher, more persistent inflation. Where, where have we heard that? Uh, and we have the rate hikes not written in stone and they might not even happen. I think that's the environment that the, that the gold traders were looking for. That, that suggests, you know, more negative real rates for longer, perhaps even more deeply real rates. And that's what for the last 50 years gold has responded to. And again, this isn't you and I going down to Miles Franklin or the local coin shop or whatever. Uh, this is the futures contract traders who set the prices that we, I think, mistakenly call the price of gold and silver. You know, that's what they look at and they got what they look for. And today, as you and I speak, it's continuing. We're, we're back almost at 1800. It's really quite striking as this, you know, as, as the market has digested what the FOMC did and didn't decide.
you know, and, and my critics will say, oh, but velocity of money is so low and that's keep, you know, so it's keeping a lid. But actually, I think that's part of my case is that velocity of money is already low. Like if we had higher velocity of money and the monetary inflation wasn't resulting in price inflation, then you could have continued, you know, monetary additions, but velocity of money could be reduced and you could end up with flat consumer prices. But if you've got velocity of money already at or near record lows and you've got the money, I mean, how low can the velocity of money go? There actually is a lower bound to that. You can't go lower than zero. There, there is a lower bound, but there is a lower bound. Um, so with the velocity of money already low and people starting to think about inflation, consumer decisions, we already see it in the data. Expectations are higher in this velocity of money question that matters. It's always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon with what's the other Friedman expression? Powell quoted it yesterday, something like uh, unknown and uh, of unknown uh, duration and extent delays. It, it takes a while for the new money to percolate through the system uh, and and move the overall economy. You know, the summary of the view here is I'm, I'm very much in the inflationary camp. I mean, you could have, if there's some new giant shutdown that just all the sphincters tighten again, you could have a, a, a temporary, not transitory, but brief flash of negative CPI like we saw last March. But that doesn't make anybody's life any cheaper. That doesn't change the trend. So I'm absolutely in the inflation camp. Um, I think that the the expectations could alter the velocity of money, which would actually turbocharge my expectations in the inflation camp. And even if there's no more money printing, what's already been done, those you know, delays of unknown duration and extent, you know, we'll, we'll see what that does. But I think our choices are inflation or inflation and stagflation or reflationary boom. And all of these are good for commodities. You know, as I say, somewhat different for gold and silver, depending on how it goes. These guys, these forecasters on Wall Street or Chicago, you know, London, you know, they, they have models that they base these things on. And I have questions about these models in the first place. Uh, as, a, as a fundamentalist, as a person who sees uh, the physical metals as savings, as a real asset, not just a tradable, you know, investment commodity. I, I, I have very serious issues with these models and the way they work. But besides that, we are in uncharted waters. You know, we have we, really the world sailed into uncharted waters after 2008, but we've gone, you know, way beyond the charts after the COVID-19 situation. So I think it's highly questionable how any of these models hold up and the assumptions that go into them in a world where we are now, I, I just, I, it's beyond question. I, I just think they're wrong. I think some of them are just flat out wrong. The, and it's not reasonable to make the same assumptions in 2021 or 2020 that you might have made in 2018 or 2019. I, I think it's, it's just wrong. Um, now, does that mean that, you know, gold's going to go back to 2000 next year and that it won't go down? No, I don't know. Nobody knows. I'm, I'm like, God, I can't tell you what's going to happen. I do think gold goes back up over 2000 next year. There's a forward looking statement for you. I can't tell you when or how much, but just the trend, the inflation that I see, I, 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 I'm comfortable saying I think gold goes back up over 2000 over the next year. And I, and I think we will see silver, see silver over 30 